Hello, everyone. We're ready for another fucking adventure. I'm here with Zenrot. Hello. And we're here to do some Teppin stuff, but this time it's different because we're not fighting each other. We're talking. We're in unity about Teppin. We're friendly about Teppin right now. Exactly. I'm not uh, trying to completely kill you with my awesome Jill deck. That's not what's currently going on. Uh, Day of Nightmares has a new pack coming out to Teppin, and um, Teppin is starting to do, I believe it's every Friday they're going to start releasing cards. Uh, I plan to get this uploaded before Friday happens, and a lot of the new cards that we're talking about ends up being uh, old, so it will be up on Thursday. Um, so we're going to talk about Day of Nightmare. If you don't know what Teppin is, Teppin is a card game. Day of Nightmare is the new pack that's coming out for it, and then it's also the new obsession of me and Zen. We're both pretty heavy into yes. it. God, and- dude, it's like all I want. It- Pokemon Masters is lucky that it's still on my radar <laughs> yeah. after how excited I am for Teppin. Yeah, and we have right here is the website that everyone should be able to see. Uh, it's got oh man, what it's Jill and that has to be Tyrant, right? That is uh, Stars. That's the name of him, right? There's so many oh, that's different Nemesis. Okay, it's Nemesis. My bad. It's Nemesis. This is the shitty Wesker card that's already not shitty. He's a, a good yeah. shitty in the way that he annoys me. Okay, because yeah, he's really good. Yes. Yeah. Um. So Nemesis. we have we have Jill, and then we have Nemesis, and then Nemesis giant ass bazooka is pointing to, I believe, is all the members of uh, what the hell is the name of um, man? I wish I remember the name of the SWAT guys, dude. He's in almost every single Resident Evil, and I can never remember his name. Do you know who I'm talking um, about? It's the guy in the mask right below Jill, right here. He's in almost the every. Yeah. Yeah. Why can't I remember his name either? Yeah. No, he's. Uh, I'm gonna look up. People are going to see me do this live. Hunk. It's Hunk, right? Yeah, it's Hunk. Okay, you figured it out. I don't have to look it up. Uh, Hunk. Hunk is in almost every single Resident Evil game in some capacity. Uh, and then on the side here, I think, is the characters from that shitty Resident Evil game. Do you remember? The one where it was like uh, Resident Evil, but it was all Dude, like... Dude, that's like half of them. You're going to have to be more specific. I'm going to type in... Okay, now I'm legit going to type this in. People are going to see this. Uh, shitty Resident Evil <laughs> game. It should show up. Uh, I'm gonna go to PC Gamers rank of Resident Evil games, and then all the rest is a bunch of other members of stars. And that is the it is a uh, is a pack themed all around uh, Resident Evil. What of Operation Raccoon City? That was the name of the game. I remember the city that. incident. Yeah. So it's going to be, it's going to be, a lot of people are expecting it to be uh, super focused on black and red. And we have some stuff here that's the new update here. So we're going to go through them. Uh, the first thing we're going to go through here is, uh, there's also a trailer right here. If people want to watch the trailer, eh, we'll save the trailer for another day. We got, we, we got <laughs> limited time here. Well, we'll on the next time we first, come I back think here. We should mention real quick, uh, yeah. this new mechanic, Spillover. Yeah, that's the, the first thing I was going to talk about. Spill over and explore. Explore, we already know. It's when a card is... Uh, something happens with a card, and then it gets sent to the EX pocket, and this is spill over. It deals... Specifically, with... explore pulls cards from outside of the deck into the EX pocket. Yes. And spill over deals half of the damage dealt to a unit to the adjacent units as well. So it's kind of like that... Um... What's that 110 unit that currently red decks use that if they, he gets a successful attack, it deals one damage to all enemies? uh neon tiger yes so it's like neon tiger but better because you actually better yeah much better this one is going to be interesting because especially if they have units like um for example tyrant who's like a 4-1 but he deals so much attack damage that it's like um he's able to kill basically anything well what's interesting is it looks like spillover is a green mechanic is it all yeah, right. based on the cards. We'll get into the cards in a minute. Okay. But, but the no... only... Yeah. Yeah, the ones that are shown with Spillover are green. All right. Well, well let's look into it. Uh, new card info. Here are the card previews. Let's start with the first one. We got... Uh, oh, man, I hate pronouncing Japanese words. Shinryu. Shibushin Ryu Awakening. And a friendly unit with Explorer performs an Explorer, and a tamed card gets with MP cost one less. So basically... Um... Any unit that has an explore mechanic, you get that card again, and then it costs one less. Something like Jill, who any time it defeats one, it gets that gun that deals four damage at the cost of, like, what is it, two? I want to say it's two, yeah. Or, like, uh, the the most common explore right now is Mikhail. 
for the, yes. the one mana pistol. So would that make his pistol zero? Yes, it would make it zero. Holy shit. <laughs> that, that's yeah, I was a... talking about this the other day, where if you play... Mikhail is three, right? Yeah, Mikhail is three. If you play him, and then you follow him with Bushinryu Awakening, you get two guns, one for one and one for zero. So you get four attack for a total of one mana. That's crazy. That's a pretty yep. good card for a specifically mm-hmm. Explorer. We've definitely were hoping for more exp- stuff that deals with Explorer because the current problem with Explorer is that you need a full deck of Explorer cards. Otherwise, like some units from Explorer just end up being like dead weight until you can actually get them on the field or something. And uh, something like this can definitely help um, getting stuff better on the field. Yeah, for sure. And for one cost, that's pretty good. That's uh, that's uh, it's a yeah, good. Cost. It's an epic rare, so I mean, you know, it's going to be difficult to get. It's kind of an expensive craft, but it's good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, next card we got is another good old rookie cop, Leon S. Kennedy, and when he dies, he explores for fighting spirit. And let's see, uh, explore for fighting spirit. spirit is down below. And it has, for some reason, it is a picture of Ryu, and it gives a friendly unit plus this two plus two. evil Ryu, it looks like, or Ryu becoming evil. He's got his little evil aura on him. Does that mean that Leon has been hiding back Ryu this entire time? Probably, yeah. I do like that this Ryu is Rookie Cop, or not Ryu, uh, Leon is like Rookie Cop Leon. Oh yeah, Rookie Cop Leon. And right now is, is Res E4 Leon. Yeah, yeah. Which I like Resident Evil 4 uh, Leon, but uh, Resident Evil 2 Leon, where he is late to work because he just got broken up with and showed up drunk. <laughs> so he was late <laughs> to his first day as a cop, is really good. Oh, Leon. It's hard to hate Leon. He's probably yeah. my favorite Resident Evil character. Yeah. And this one's, uh, I would say this one's interesting. I'm curious to see if, like, whether or not this Death Explorer get. I mean, plus two with plus two is pretty good. I just don't know if um, the cost of him having to die is worth it. Well, you can proc it with Bushinryu Awakening, like we just talked about. But even then, I, he's a 2-3. We'll have to see some more Explore cards to see how the deck is going to shape up. Yeah, definitely, okay, definitely. Hard judgments on it. That's uh, though. Yeah, so I think we'll see more about him. He's an interesting card for sure. Uh, next card we got is Sarah Gios. Is that how you pronounce it? Uh, Seregios, Ser- I'm not 100 percent sure myself. Hmm. Either way, he Seregio, is a... Seregios, whatever. He is a one six four with flight and combo. Yeah, so he's kind of a guile for one more mana, but cuts out the middleman of needing Rathalos' ability. Yeah, so it definitely helps out. I would say more for. Also, he avoids the Wesker card that says kill a three or below unit, which is very yep. good. You have no mm-hmm. idea how annoying it is when you're playing when you are Wesker and you have that card and you see one of the kitties and you realize it's the wrong kitty. Yeah, it's the shielded kitty. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you're just like nothing. So I think it's I think it's pretty solid. He doesn't replace uh, Carlos because I think Carlos is better because he has more health and is able to tank yeah, a Carlos little bit more. Carlos has nine. Uh, but this is still. I pretty think good. that he. I don't think he replaces Carlos in Rathalos, but I think if you're using Carlos in other decks that don't give flight, he will automatically replace him. Yeah, I could definitely see that. Um, but for someone like um, Rathalos, it, he only really replaces maybe you. You run. You run less Guile, and you run a little bit more Sergio. Even then, if you're running Guile, you might just keep Guile because you, the mana cost is why you're running Guile to begin with. And it's Otherwise, still... you're just running Carlos. Yeah, and then he's also good for a good fake out because then they waste all their stuff on Guile. And if they don't, yeah. then you just win with Guile and everyone wins. The curse of Rathalos. Either they kill your thing or, or you win with it. It's tough yeah. times. Yeah, tough times for anyone having to deal with that. Uh, next card we got is uh, Willow. She is a six cost two seven, and her uh, ability is when played, explore and s- for explore for spillover victory gain plus one plus two. Wait, so explore for spillover? So that's a card, right? Uh, it is. Yeah, it's this other explore card down here, and it gives plus one plus two and spillover to a friendly unit. All right, that's pretty good for one She's- mana. For yeah. one mana, and then it's also a Monster Hunter card, keeping up with the theme of exploring something that is not from your base game. And not at all from your original game, yeah. No. 
uh that's pretty good the only problem with her is that she's six so she avoids the a lot of the uh hybrid decks but she's going to be good in a yeah. pure i think she'd be pretty solid for a pure um uh green deck but again this you know is another... what i think spillover might be interesting for and this is me just playing the optimist i could i'm probably wrong here mm-hmm. but if you really get a charge shot x going spillover is going to be ridiculous for that oh yeah because you get two health and then so it becomes a uh for one cost you get a uh two three then and then also they spill over uh, you everything. get two two because charge shot doesn't give any extra health okay still so you one... get still good yeah definitely uh that's interesting that's definitely interesting it's another card of like good for now but let's see how much uh, she's a common right from what her rarity is uh rare i think rare all right not bad not bad for a rare it's a rare leon is a common and uh Seregios is a rare how can you uh tell the difference here they look the same to me oh i see there's a slightly see more... how there's like a little plus sign in the middle of the okay. rares also leon's is way more dull that's how i yeah, could actually his, like his doesn't look like it has also if you click on the card it tells you the rarity i'm dumb you're right <laughs> <laughs> but you can tell the difference the icons are in fact different all right uh, next person we got is Aaliyah. You may remember her as that card that Green uses to deal uh, attack based on HP to everyone else. Yeah, emergency, uh, whatever. Emergency What's it called? Emergencies. That's what it is. No, is that what it's called? I want to, It's something emergency. It is the only green card that emergency deals... Emergency strike. That's emergency what it's strike. called. It's emergency strike. It is the only green card that deals damage. Actually not true. Is there another one? There's a shittier version of it that's, uh, Chun-Li's like force field oh okay well there we go uh, based on attack instead of health so it's a strictly inferior version of emergency strike but it does exist all right fair enough it's similar to how um there's a uh Seth is just a better version of the previous tyrant card who is also the exact same cost <laughs> or like how uh axel is just an upgraded dan etc uh yeah like yeah definitely i see it uh, but this is Aaliyah, she is an epic, and she gets, her effects are, she gets a shield, and on death, she explores for Chimera Right Armor, and the tame card gets MP cost minus two. Right, so Chimera Right Armor is a three mana naturally, so actually it becomes a one mana when it's pulled this way. Huh. Two plus two and shield. So I... that's pretty fucking good. That is pretty good for, again, one mana cost, considering that a lot of the, um current the current uh fucked up thing about running a hybrid with green and wanting shields is that eventually you run out of shield cards yep. uh so this definitely helps with that and the fact that it just automatically makes it minus two but it's a base three does that mean that this is actually going to be a card you get maybe i think it's i think it's just a base three because otherwise i mean it, ha- it would cost no mana hmm. just so that it can be effectively a base one yeah yeah okay hmm hmm interesting all right i think that's pretty good she's actually extreme the only problem with her is that she's a four at a two one which is super unfortunate yeah, i mean she's gonna die right away but you can throw her in a lane where she's gonna die she's gonna do four damage yeah it's she like a, a shield yeah she's like a tyrant in that aspect and she's similar to a tyrant. She's going to do four damage. She's going to die right away. And she's going to give a plus two, plus two shield to somebody for basically free. Mm-hmm. I think that she's solid. I mean, she's an epic rare, so. Yeah, it's something. And you can definitely, um, the only problem that's going to be, the only issue you're ever going to have with her is when, I guess, it's your opening. And I guess I'm not sure if you would want to open. Actually, you would want to kind of open it with her. Again, we'll see. A lot of these cards are me trying to like think of, like, it's based off of the way the game is currently played. But you know obviously... who she's going to be really good in? Hmm. Tell me, please. Say it again. Dawn Chun. Oh, she would be very good there. Drop her for four. Give her the yawn. You get four. You get you refund her cost basically when she dies, oh. and then you get the Chimera Ride Armor. And there's no way for someone like Ryu to automatically kill him to get there faster than you because she has a shield. Exactly. All right. Yeah. Okay. That's extremely good. Um. Next guy we got here. This one's going to be a tough one. Is Kushala Dahora the Storm? Kushala Dahora, and then the Storm is its title. 
And I believe this is the monster on that current um, legendary green card that deals a shitload of damage to flight units, right? Raging Whirlwind? Um, You know what? Let me Google Raging Whirlwind because I don't remember what it looks like, to be honest. When you're doing that, I'll explain what he does. Like I said, he's a legendary, and his effects are that he has flight, and when he's on the field, he reduces damage taking of three or less to one. And then after dealing damage to an enemy hero, it returns a random enemy unit with five HP or less to the deck. This is an interesting card, mostly because it's just weird. It's different, right? Yes, it is very weird. So here's my question about it, because I've never fully understood. Does that include Graveyard? Because he does. No, 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 no. Because it doesn't say where it's returning the random 5 HP or less. It just says returns a random enemy with 5 oh, HP or less. I'm, I'm assuming it's on the board. Because if it was in the graveyard, that would be a net positive for your opponent. <laughs> so hmm. it means on the board. Because that's the only way the ability is good. All right. Fair enough. Yeah, that the... was weird because like... Oh, Roaring Typhoon. Yes, that is... Art. That's it. That's him. Okay. Yep. This is definitely um, a weird legendary, but yeah, also it, it's not bad by any means. No. It's um. Not. Off the top of my head, a deck where it's really gonna shine. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. like, green really needed flight, so it's happy to have somebody that's a natural flyer. Because green just loses the flight like outright. Yep. One hundred percent. And it's got. Really great durability, which is nice. Not just an attack. It's damage taken of any kind. So if Ryu drops like Legiacris and it shoots three into Kushala, it's actually only going to do one. So it's got a lot of durability. It can I don't know. Without any way to speed it up, I just don't know how effective it's going to be. I think it's going to be really good against heavy buffers. Yes. Rathalos. Yeah, that right. wants to, to dump everything it has into Carlos or something. And then Kushala hits you back into the deck, and you've lost everything. And you might even be bricked now. Yeah, specifically cards that require, like, the only way I can function is that there's a monster on the field that I can give it to. This thing ends up, like, completely fucking you over. Because it returns it to the deck, and then you have to actually find it again. Uh, yeah, I... Yeah, I... He's only six, so like it's not the end of the world that he's not like super busted. I think if he had charge, he would be like a lot better on his face to me. But he also might be too good if he had charge, because then that that's like at I least mean... at least rush, because then rush you would at least guarantee one monster returning back to the hand before they I... figure out a way to deal. Oh with wait, it. wait, charge is what I meant by rush. Rush is when they start right next to your. Yeah. Yeah, charges when okay. ch- charges what fucking Chun Li has, which makes you win the game in like ten minutes, ten seconds. Okay, so that's what Chun and Ibuki has. Okay, not that I meant Rush, mm. but I still think that might be too good because imagine you're playing someone who dumped all this mana into some dude. He's got like a twenty twenty Senko, and you just drop Kushala Diora and it's gone. Yeah. So here's another funny thing I just realized. Um, what if you give him combo? If he deals damage twice, like if you use lightning legs and he destroys a monster and he deals damage twice, does he return two more monsters to the deck? I don't think so because I don't think Rathalos does damage twice. Hmm. Alright, fair enough. Although, okay, I read his ability wrong. I thought it was a random enemy unit that was 5 or less MP, but it's actually 5 HP or less. Yeah, so that's a little H- bit different. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think, he's, I think he's got potential, but I'm not going to sign off on him yet. Yeah, we need to see more of what the new pack has. Again, sure, this is, yeah. we're currently basing this off what the base set we have right now and then what we see here, and that's basically it. Uh, let's go on to the next card. Next card we have is Vector, very close to my dad's name. And his, he's a epic, and when played, if there's a friend... Hey, is that Vector, not Hunk? No, that's it's someone completely Pistol different. Man. Yeah, it's Vector. It's a completely original character, Vector, who is from Resident Evil. Uh, And when played, if there's a friendly purple unit other than himself with an MP cost of 4, present, gain plus 1, plus 3. And then while on the field, this unit cannot be blocked. Huh. 
So that yeah, makes... he's he's a weird one because like two eight is good and yeah. you can't block him, but he has no real rush speed. No good purple units cost four mana Currently, yet right yet. now. Maybe there's maybe more of them are coming. I don't know. I don't know. I don't see him getting a whole lot of use. You need a you need someone like you need what is basically wheel gator for purple who is just like two attack but ten HP. Yeah, it just you, has a lot of board stick. And you then know? you and then you play vector, and then next turn you play vector again, and then you just stall the game. Yeah, that would be something. But I just don't think purple has anyone that wants that right now. Hmm. Maybe they will get some when more cards get revealed for Day of Nightmares that will combo well with Vector. But yeah, for now I don't really see it. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a cool effect for now. But we'll see how the the current pack lays that out. Next card we okay. got is Tigrex. He is an epic, and his effects are Rush, Agility, Spillover, and Resonate, and Flick Seal on self. Yeah, so Tigrex looks good. He's a uh, very, I kind of wish that he was, this is kind of fucked up in a lot of ways, but if he was black, I think he would replace, um, he might be able to replace Devilo just because he has so many goddamn abilities. He absolutely would replace Devil Joe by like mile. He, he would 100% replace Devil Joe. Yeah. Um, I think Tigrex is incredible here. He's expensive, mm. but like the issue with purple's game plan is that you need their cards to drop, and then you you right away to just resonate, resonate. I got to get value out of my cards. Like, even Jester. Jester's really good. Pop him at seven mana, because he's going to get sniped, and you're not going to get any value out of him, because you need to get at at least, preferably, two resonates off. Mm -hmm. Gargoyles out on the screen. Uh, Tigrex is a great way to just drop a unit on the board. Damage. And then the opponent has to deal with Tigrex while you have time to recover. It's not like Esther, where you drop them on the board and you really have to get stuff out and hope they don't die. You know what I mean? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and then, of Rush, course, so he's, so he's going to be four damage in your face. He's got agility, just like Ibuki, so they have to react to him. And he's got spillover, so if you drop him right in the middle, he's doing two damage to the outer lanes. Yeah. And of course, Rush, which starts over. And I also think it's fun because I think his effect is, it's like you said, not only does it like help breathe with the current way, but it's also something different from what you would see from Morgan or Dante. Like in my mind, imagining a Morgan or Dante who does not immediately play an ability is kind of not right, something who that don't happens. want to resonate. Yeah. No, I think Tigrex is really. Good. I think the first thing I'm going to try when I get uh, Day of Nightmares is I'm going to swap out my Jesters for Tigrexes. And see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely something hard to react to. And you have to react to this. And you have to hope that the rest of your board is not like, you know. You have place. to react to it and you're going to take damage. Because Tyrex has seven life. Yeah. So like, even if you block him, you're not going to kill him in one hit. And because of spillover, his attacks are worth six health. Seven mana, especially against decks that like to drop people you know, Rathalos or even Wesker who wants to put people on the board early mm -hmm. skyrocket up in value, especially in the center lane. If the, uh, the enemy board is at least, you know, uh, another thought came into my head while I was talking about, I'm going to finish this one and then go to that one. Um, in the center lane, his attacks become worth eight. If the enemy board is full because he's shooting two to both the outside lanes. The only question I have with Spillover is I wonder if Spillover works if you attack directly. Triggers the, huh. the, the lane attacks if you hit the hero. That's something I we're going to have to... I assume it would? Yeah, if, uh, if, it, if it does that, then that's going to be a... Let me look up exactly what Spillover says. I want to say it says, deals half of damage dealt to a unit. Okay, it has to be a to a unit. He will not hero. That's interesting. Yes. So they could maybe ignore him. Then again... You can't just take four to the face forever. You gotta Dude, do something about you it. You cannot ignore someone with agility. Fucking Chun-Li yeah. can win the game in literally a couple seconds, and she only has two attack, and she has combo, so that makes her four. So that yeah. means, so in my mind, there's if you if you choose to ignore him, then you choose death. <laughs> That's what you're choosing. Yeah. Or like if you let him sit for too long. God, I can't think of a lot of cards off the top of my head that deal well with him. It's basically just Would do well with him. Rathalos could counter him. 
It's funny that like for the big monsters, you actually need to bring in your own monster hunter monster to take them down. I mean, even Devil Joe would be a draw. Yeah, they would, they would kill would each be. other. Uh, obliterate or mana, so that would be a net gain for the purple side. Yeah, obliterate would be something that, but then you don't want to ah, use obliterate well, on Tigrex because that means that now you're especially in purple because now you're losing removal that you need for Ibuki later. Yeah, it's tough. And the only other thing is, I would say, is uh, in the mirror match, is that they could halt it, but then they can't halt it forever. Yeah. Well, the only thing with the mirror match is if they get Tigrex out and you get Ibuki out right at the same time, they're immediately on the defensive because Ibuki also has agility and she's just going to do more damage because she's going to build up her stats faster. Huh. That's true. All right. But uh, Tigrex is definitely the card I'm most excited about. I, I was I, at first I didn't think Purple got too much of huge value until I saw him. Mm, yeah, really he, excited for Tigrex. Yeah, and I'm also I think he's pretty fun. We'll see how he uh, pans out uh, when the the pack releases. Now let's move on to the next card. I believe this is our last. These are our last four. Uh, uh, we got a three common Ada Wong, and when played, explores for stealth. And let me see. Stealth, stealth is, is down here. stealth is two cost purple makes a friendly unit unblockable. Yeah, so stealth is an upgraded hook shot. It's just better. Yeah, but the only uh, cost the is means that you to have get to... it means that you're stuck with Ada Wong. Yeah, so who... this is an, another thing that I'm actually. This is the both purple and black have two extremely powerful cards that are hindered by the fact that they come with not the greatest cards in the world. Yeah, they have a shitty attachment to them. Yeah. Because, like, you got to think, those Ada Wongs, that could be Anacharis, you know? Or yeah. even the 1-8 Senko. Like, I could see her getting play over Lumine. So valuable. He's basically three more dark holds. Are you really going to cut for Ada Wong for just the chance of maybe putting a slightly better hook shot? On your Ibuki? I don't know. Yeah. It's definitely something where you'll have to... Um, the way, again, the way the game is currently played is that you'd have to make some concessions for them. Like, maybe if someone... This is also specifically for a player who is maybe starting out. Like, if you don't have... Like, someone like me who could not create... For the longest time, I did not have hook shocks. Hook shoot. Hook shoots? Shot. Hook shot. Hook shot. I did not have hook shot. Let's so the idea of... The idea of having like a common Ada Wong and then I basically get it for cheap, I think that's pretty neat. That's pretty neat, you know. Obviously, yeah, it is a good alternative to like if you don't have the big cards. But like at, at the end game level, I I think Hookshot's still going to see the play. Yeah. Over yeah. it. Yeah. Still, for uh, new people, pretty decent. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Next card we got is uh, the first five black card. No, that's not true. I'm just saying the first five black card that we've looked at because there's two in the. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We got High Max. He is a rare. He has Flight rev and Revenge. He gains plus two, plus yes. two. Yes. So he would be a 4 7 when he drops with Revenge. I will say the Flight's he, really good. Yeah. Flight is the one thing that I think Wesker is missing because the only thing he has Flight is the bird, and that does not help you against uh, anyone. <laughs> Specifically, yeah, Crow, you want. Crow is not good. No. Crow was only good when farming Spike Launch was about. Yes, and he still sees... The problem him. is that High Max is kind of expensive Yeah, being in the end, um, is, in uh, my this, opinion. Yeah, this is a problem with a lot of... Um, and the good thing about Revenge is that he comes back at, I believe... Is it two cost? Uh, is it... Rounded No, down? they lose two. They lose two. Okay, so he comes back as a three. So a three cost, that makes him good, but a lot of the problem is that you have to actually like deal with the fact that for the first turn, a two five with flight at five, at best he's just kind of like a... Um, because there's no... Actually, you know, here's another good deck that he might be pretty good in is the Suicide Nergigante, because then you could buff him for a single turn and actually deal some damage and maybe... And he would actually matter, and then you can... Because another thing I was thinking that would actually be good with the Nergigante thing you were talking about is that... Mm -hmm. A two attack minion with agility or anything is kind of ignorable. Like, I'll let you hit me in the face for two attack. To do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I could just do other things in the other lanes that you can't populate now. This is with the that problem. Nergigante strat, that's interesting because then he'd be a six nine. 
A six nine, he deals six damage, and then he'll immediately die. But that's what you and want. Then he'll come back. Then, yeah. But he'll come back cheaper, which is the important thing. Is that Nergigante has to build up specifically the suicide build. Is that his early game is very slow, but the second all his units die, he becomes extremely hard to deal with. Yeah. It's almost impossible because just none can stop gets. You're not able to destroy his units as quickly as he's able to get them back. So I think Hymax might be able to see play in a pure rever- revenge deck. I don't see him replacing anyone in a, um, for example, Ouroboros. Like there's just. Oh, no, I don't cards. think he'll get no Ouroboros. No. He's too it, slow. He's not. It's nice that they that he has flight. I want more black cards with flight for sure. I'm sure you do. Yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. sure you do. Yeah. And talking about the man of the hour, we have Albert Wesker. He is the epic, and he is a zero. He's zero attack, three HP. And when he gets played, he gains plus one, plus one for each time Revenge has activated. Revenge count currently is at zero. So yeah, here's so he's similar to like uh, Fate Defying Ryu yes. or um, an ability where he's tied to effects that have taken place on the board. He's interesting because he could drop like an absolute monstrosity death beast at the end of the game. But if you draw him early, he's going to clog you really bad for... Yeah. And you also have the big problem, which is something that um, uh, is a problem for all revenge decks, really. It is the card that basically sets you back to your original eight attack in HP. <laughs> yeah, the provisions. green card, emergency strike or whatever. Yeah. And this would be a guy that would, would suck to get Kushalad. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, he'll definitely get like... In and get the buffs again, I guess. Um. The, the would not revert him, right? It would only emergency strike or whatever it's called. The evasive maneuver. That's what evasive, it's called. Evasive, evasive maneuver. maneuver. Yeah. It returns him back to zero three. That would suck. Yeah, that would. Uh, you'd basically have a dead card if you had someone with flight. They would be able. You'd be unable to stop them. He would just be stuck there. Yeah, you'd have to use like just desserts to sacrifice him or something. Yeah, exactly. That's what you have to the do. Lane. Yeah. And that's probably the only one issue I have with him. Other than that, I think he's pretty fun in a specifically a revenge deck. I don't know if I would run more than two. Because personally, I would much rather have a tired deck full of revenge units. Yeah, no, I, I would agree. I would not run him at more than maybe even one. Yeah. At one, Just it becomes, as a one-off, like, yeah. haha, my last my last ditch effort, all my yeah. revenges are dead. It's similar to the legendary. Um, it's funny because the legendary... Um, wesker the one that has 17 attacks 17 uh uh hp oh and his Uh, stats get lower the more health you have yeah but the funny thing is that he's the exact opposite where if you hit him with that same emergency he returns back to 17 17 he becomes ridiculous um i i like this card more than the legendary wesker that's out already i think he's a little bit more fun to play with i mean there's obviously just easier to to play yeah that too uh probably the best wesker that is not the actual unit itself. Oh yeah, the playable hero. Yeah, uh, he's actually he also kind of reminds me of the um, the Nergigante card as well, who also starts as a zero something. But the difference is that oh yeah, and he becomes a five ten. If you like sacrifice half your deck. Yeah, it's like ten cards, I think. So a third of your deck. Yeah, interesting. And finally, the last card is Vile MK two, and on death he explores for corrosion. And if you don't know what corrosion is. Uh, when we just saw this card out of hand, we thought that Black was literally going to run away with the game because it yeah, destroys... Yeah, this was, this was a card that I'm very happy to find out is an explore because and it's I, ridiculous. I'm also going to agree with you because I uh, think that this card would have pushed Black over the edge. It destroys an enemy unit with MP cost of 5 or less and it's at It's literally cost. Wesker's hero power for 3 mana. Yeah, this would literally power creep everything because it's better than the two cost by such a wide margin. It's not even funny. It's better than the two Mm -hmm. cost that like says destroy an enemy unit and you take damage equal to uh, their attack. It's better than so many other cards. But the good thing is it would be it's the best destruction card in the deck other than obliterate. Yeah, obliterate is the only thing better. And it's uh, it's thankfully it is tied to vile MK2. It's actually kind of funny that he's an epic. But this card is a rare. Yeah, that is weird. Usually the explorers are the same rarity. I thought maybe uh, this as card their base card. Maybe he has. Um, maybe you can get this card through various ways. I mean, that would be really fucking. That would really fucking suck. But it's like possible. multiple ways to get corrosion. I hope not. I also um, hope not too. But we'll see. Uh, but as it is, he kind of sucks. 
Vile, Vile himself, I'm going to say right out, if it was not for his Explorer for Corrosion, I would say he would fucking suck. He sucks worse than the Vile with Revenge. Cause at yeah, least like that the would... basic default revile, or Vile? Uh, yeah. he, he's not good. But a four it... mana for a 2-5 is not enough. That's, that's... No. Corrosion is so good that, you know, I think he'll see some play. Yeah. For, uh, but at this point, you got this, in essence, those this... and you just drop them in sacrificial lanes, and then you get three, like, pretty much cripple a hybrid deck. Yes, yes, you can. Like, this card on its own, pretty much. Also, you can just play him and then immediately sacrifice him. Mm-hmm. And so he's worth seven HP. And then imagine you get dropping, crush- if you have like eight mana, you drop him and then you just deserts right away. Oh. You get a kill on an enemy minion, and you pull corrosion immediately. Or, or better yet, maybe you just suicide bomb him, and then you launch him at the enemy. Even if you just do the base plus two plus two, he becomes a four seven that dies in a turn, and then you get corrosion immediately. Oh. So maybe he's better with Nergigante than I, yeah. I don't. Cor- see corrosion him. is the appeal of this card. Yes, I think really it, good appeal that I think makes him at least worth looking at. Yeah. And I think for me, the cards that would specifically I would want in a Nurigante um, suicide deck are cards that get st- stuff that happens on death, or they have revenge. And if they have both, then they're just broken. Yeah, I don't think we'll ever get to the point where they we get a revenge plus a explore for a really good card. Yeah, that is not a like legend. Collision. That is not a legendary. That is only one copy. That is yeah. a, that is a, in my mind. So that is vile. And with that, that is every single card in the preview one. And we'll, I think we'll come back for preview volume two and three. Uh, just oh, yeah, like, for sure. Yeah. Uh, this video ended up going really long, but it's fine because we just like talking about Teppin. Let me talk about the last thing yeah. on here, which is I think if you enter the Grand P, pre, the Grand Prix, what is it? Is it Grand Prix or Prix? Grand Prix. Grand Prix. Grand Prix. Uh, starting from round Grand two. Prix. Uh, let me just read what it says here verbatim. Earn Day of Nightmare pack tickets as a reward in the final round of the Core Grand Prix. You can even earn PAX tickets in the championship round for ground for Group B, which starts from round two. Even if you couldn't join round one, you still have a chance to earn Day of Nightmare packs, so join a Grand Prix now. And that's the current thing that's going on. That's the thing that's super easy, and the next card reveal will be on 823. KST, I don't know what so that's that means. Friday. Yeah, Friday. I don't know if we'll come back on Friday. We definitely need more time to think about some of these cards. Like, if we had reacted yeah. to Corrosion on day of, we would have said this is the death of Teppin. This is yeah, the- for sure, for sure. Uh, before Friday, so that people can get the first set of cards talked about a little bit before the next set comes out, and then yeah. maybe over the weekend or something we'll record uh, yeah. set two. Yeah, definitely. Uh, for now, but of course, now that we end this. Uh... Of these cards, which one do you think you like most? I think we Grex. Will... Yeah, I think it's Tigrex for you, and then for me, um, uh, you know, I think I'm going to go Tigrex too. Obviously, I'm with my boy Wesker on this, and some, and into a small portion, suicidal Nergigante, suicide Gigante, uh, Gigante suicido. Um, I'll figure out a name for him eventually. Um, but I'm, I'm going to agree with Tiger X. I think he's pretty fun. And if there's a possibility for, if Vector gets more support in the later packs, like the idea of like, maybe, cause right now there's just not a lot of, it doesn't make a lot of sense to drop a lot of units. Like there's no purple deck that runs more than like what? Seven units. Uh, I think the, what I run right now is six, seven, a 10. Yeah. So. That's what makes something like Vector so hard to think about right now. Is that in a, a deck with a deck with ten car with only ten monsters? Yeah, how the it, hell do you Vector make- is just very a that purple plays right now. Yeah. Whereas Tigrex, even though he has like an anti resonate ability, he's not necessarily antithetical to the way that it plays because he's still an aggressive hmm. that you can drop without having to like dedicate a lot of mana to. I think he's actually something good. Um, yeah, a lot. So yeah, that, uh, that's how that's how we feel right now. Drop, of course. If you what you feel about the current type of cards, we'll I'll gladly hear about what you had to see about it. I'll read the comments if there's any. Of course, I will always read whatever yeah, you put down. Sure. Uh, until then, uh, join us next time whenever we decide to record something else. Just a heads up. Chances are it's going to be a lot of Teppin because I'm really in love with Teppin right now. Uh, yeah, I don't really want to play much else. But... 
Also, it's going to take, like, uh, what, uh, five more days until fucking Dokkan's ready to do something? Come on. Give me some more fucking time. Yeah, uh, Pokemon Masters on Monday. Is that confirmed? Is Pokemon Masters finally ready to get off of Twitter and get well, into the, Google Well, the App Store, it's a it's a pre-order, and the App Store says the drop date is the 25th. Or sorry, is it the 25th or the 29th? Dude, I don't know. <laughs> good, good luck. It's next figuring. week, regardless. It's next week. <laughs> All right, fair enough. And they're ready to get off its ass and be playable be playable okay then everyone until next time uh join us for whenever we get together again yeah. bye everybody bye leave a like leave all that good stuff subscribe i'm almost to a thousand <laughs> get me to a thousand to a thousand for god's sake he deserves it yes i also agree with zen <laughs> listen to zen <laughs> also subscribe <laughs> to zen see the previous video we made where we talked about um uh just in general our tap and feelings and now with that that's a legit goodbye goodbye everyone bye